Hi, my name is Michael Richardson and I am here to uh, talk to you about the Bootstrapping Remote Secure Key Infrastructure or Brewski. Um, this is an IETF Anima protocol. It's part of the IETF Anima Working Group and it deals with the uh, onboarding of devices into enterprises, ISPs, and also can deal with IoT devices into a wide variety of things. Um, the document related to this is on the screen, Draft IETF Anima Bootstrapping Key Infra, and it will shortly become an RFC. These slides and videos are at the URL shown, and you can get more information with that URL as well. These slides are uh, rendered to PDF using an Expand Animations plugin for LibreOffice, and if you are a Visual Basic expert, they uh, could use some help um, to uh, improve it. So, Brewski Overview connects a new device, a pledge, to your network operations center and does it in a secure way. Why is it called Brewski and how is it pronounced? Well, it's pronounced like a colloquialism in the Canada US for beer. And that's B R E W S K I, but we omitted the E and W. And then you can see some nice beer. So, what is the problem? you have a new device and maybe it's a some new IoT toy and you're going to bring it to your home and you'd like to securely add it to your network or maybe you have a gas generator and you want to bring it to your plant and you'd like it to be connected up properly or maybe you're an ISP and you have a new router installed in a data center and you'd like it to automatically show up in your NOC without you having to fly someone halfway around the world to type five or six commands Generically, we make the pledge, we call it a, we uh, show it as a duck, and we have a uh, network operator, the owner of the resident of the network, and we call that a registrar, or sometimes a JRC for Join Registrar Coordinator. We'd like them to enter into relationship. That's a secure relationship where each is sure that the other is in fact the, de the device uh, uh, you really involved and not some imposter. And once that's done, we really would like them to stay that way. So, what about new devices? Well, we uh, suggest, and our specification and many other people suggest, that the manufacturer should uh, install an IDEV ID. This is an IEEE 8021AR certificate. It's a unique key pair per device. The manufacturer installs it, signs it with a private CA, and uh, it indicates the serial number of the device, the type of the device, and who the manufacturer is. Given this, it's relatively easy for the device to prove that it's a device of the particular type that was expected. And for the operator to say, oh yes, this is in fact the device that I bought and from the manufacturer that I expected, and I'd like it on my network. Um, so that's easy. But what about the device itself? The device itself doesn't know which network it should join and whether it's joined the correct network. This is particularly a big deal for Wi-Fi, but it can also be, as the next video shows, a problem in wired situations as well. So how does it work? Well, we the manufacturer is obligated to provide a MASA, a Manufacturer Authorized Signing Authority. And the device has its trust anchor uh, installed at compile time. So that means that the device can trust statements from the manufacturer about its ownership. So, the device sends a signed voucher request to the uh, registrar. The device typically doesn't have any network connectivity when it's first installed. We can't really trust it yet. We don't know what it is. And the registrar turns around and sends this signed voucher request to the MASA. The MASA then thinks, does this device belong to this owner? Did I sell it to them? Do I have a record of the sale? Or in some cases for low-valued things like light bulbs or uh, CPE devices, it may be, mean, well, whichever registrar comes along first, it's going to be the owner. And the important part is that it is, in fact, either the same one as the first one or as an authorized resale. If so, a voucher is issued. The voucher is passed to the owner, and the owner redeems it by sending it to the pledge. The pledge, remember, it had that trust anchor, is able to validate the voucher, and is able to see that the registrar is in fact the, de the correct device for it. The end result is they enter into a relationship and a series of 
of certificates are then issued. The registrar provides an LDAV ID, that's L for local device ID, which is signed by the registrar and allows the pledge to, to prove both to the registrar and to other devices on the network that it belongs in that, that home or, or ISP or enterprise. The next uh, video will talk about more about how does this process work um, and that's all for this video.